Hey everybody, welcome back. I am so happy to see you guys again. If you happen to be new to the channel, I am an actress and I am a 3D animator who works for games, movies and TV shows. And the whole purpose of this channel is to talk about the industry, to talk about latest tools and things that you can work with to make your workflow easier. I wanted to bring you guys a video series of tools that we have implemented in our studio and that have been life-changing. I have a friend who's Andy Latham and he is so good at just coding and scripting and he has been helping me. So we pitch him an idea of like, there's something that we as animators are struggling with. Would you mind like kind of helping us develop a tool for this and that. So it's just like a brainstorm of things that we felt that we're lacking. And so in the studio I'm working on, in Steamroller, we have developed these tools internally for everybody. And they were kind enough to let us put these tools in the internet for free for anyone who wants to use them. So big shout out to Steamroller, big shout out, of course, to Andy Latham. And if you want some of his tutorials and tips on how to script and how to make tools for Maya for beginners, he's going to be giving a talk in my Patreon really soon next week. Remember that you can join my Patreon for as little as $5 a month and he's going to be speaking to us live there. So don't miss that. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. My name is Ilse Samarripa and this is The World Space. Okay, so the first tool I want to talk to you guys about is called Image Plane Loader. You know how in Maya you are supposed to import reference and it seems like a simple, straight process that should be able to be done in like two minutes, but it's not, it's always complicated and you have either an image plane and an image sequence or something that's not really attached to your camera. So you move your camera and everything changes and then you have to retime it and then it loads and it takes forever to load. Well. This tool that Andy Latham created is to make all that process way easier. It is just an automation in which you just load the tool, you can import an image sequence and it has such cool features. One awesome thing this tool does is that you can gather a video clip and it is gonna create, it's gonna make a little folder and create all this image sequence automatically for you from that video and it can even reduce the quality so that when you import it into Maya there is no lag in your scene and it's not like as heavy as an image plane sequence. You also have the ability to attach it to a camera and no matter if it's for example perspective or you want to actually move the camera it's gonna be there like it's gonna remain in place where you put it. So there are all these little thing that could be better but Maya does not necessarily provide you with those tools and so this tool is free super super easy to use and I can't think of anyone better to explain to you how this tool works than the actual creator of the tool so I'm gonna leave you guys with Andy so he can explain step by step how to use this wonderful tool. Hello my name is Andy and I'm gonna show you the image plane loader which is a tool designed to improve your life immeasurably in so many ways. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's designed to streamline the process of uh, importing reference footage into Maya. Um, a process that if you've ever done it manually, you will, you will know that it is fraught with problems and you will probably have spent hours scratching your head wondering why your footage isn't working. Um, so this is just going to make things a lot simpler. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. Uh, so let's see how it works. We're going to use um, a cheetah walking along, minding her own business or his own business. I'm not sure I can tell which that is. Um, so this is a video. We can use an image sequence if we wish, uh, but I'm using a video here and you'll see why I'm pointing that out in a minute. So if we go into Maya and load up the tool, we can see first of all that it says select a camera and choose your options. A reference camera will be created if no camera is selected. What this means is that if I click uh, an existing camera in my scene and I use this tool to import my footage, it will get applied to that camera. If I don't select a camera, then a reference camera will be created instead and the footage will be applied to it. 
So, let's first of all select the perspective camera. And let's ignore these couple of options. We'll come back to those. We'll just see what the tool does by default. If we choose, uh, if we click the choose video or image sequence button, we can then pick our video, press open, and bang, there it is. Just working. Isn't that good? So, um, what's happened there? Because more has happened there than meets the eye. Um, if we go back to our folder, where that video exists, you'll notice that there is a folder next to the video with the same name. That wasn't there before. Let's look at what's inside. Ah, it's an image sequence. So what has happened there is that the tool has taken our video, converted it to an image sequence and imported that instead. Now why has it done that? Well, if you use a video directly on an image plane in Maya, as you scrub the timeline, Maya has to read that video and it has to interpret which frame to display and this takes an amount of processing power um, and depending on the size of the video and the, and the way it's encoded it can be it can be a bit of a resource hog and so if you've got a, a scene that you're trying to keep nice and light so that you can see your animation in real time um, this can be an issue. So we try to streamline things and make things as, as light as possible and that involves converting to an image sequence. If instead of a video you were to select an image sequence anyway it would just import that. It wouldn't do any conversion, it would just import it. So that's what that does. So if we start a new scene and instead of selecting a camera we don't select anything and we follow the exact same process, but let's delete that image sequence folder. Um, so we select our cheetah footage, we press open, and we see nothing really change in the perspective viewport, but we can see that a reference camera has been created. So if you go to panels and our reference camera, we find our footage, there it is. So those are the two options you've got in terms of uh, how to attach to a camera. Um, so let's explore these uh, these options now. First of all we've got fast mode. Now you'll notice it says video only. Uh, as I said before if you use an image plane, uh, sorry if you use an image sequence um, no conversion will happen but if you use a video that's when the conversion happens and what this fast mode does is it changes the parameters of that conversion. Um, so if your video is high resolution maybe a high bit rate, you know, large file size. Um, what this will do is it will reduce all of that. Uh, so we only have the bare minimum of information coming in. Um, and let's, let's have a look. It's easier to show than to uh, explain. Uh, let's delete the existing image sequence and select our original footage again. If we press open, we can see that the footage this time is super low resolution and all the color information has been stripped out of it so it is nice and light um, we'll also see if we look at the image sequence that these files are very very small in size roughly 15 kilobytes um, and what this means is this sequence will use even fewer resources than it was before um, and it will just keep my even smoother than it was before because you don't always need the color information. You don't always need a high resolution image. We're just looking for the motion of this thing. So that's an option you've got to you. Um, now, if I select the image plane, we can, uh, it, this is attached as a fixed image plane. And I can do things like move this offset value to move it around relative to the camera. But, you know, scrubbing channels like this is a it's not very intuitive it's not very pleasant to use so there is an option another, uh, another option if i can get my words out um for the tool so let's start a new scene start from scratch um let's bring back up my uh there we go let's get rid of that cheetah uh image sequence so we're just back to the original video um and let's load up our tool again 
and this time we're going to click free image plane and we're going to choose our cheetah footage again and you'll see that it's gone onto a reference camera because we didn't have um, a camera selected so if we go to that camera now what we can do is we can select that image plane which is working just as before um, but we can drag it around with the normal manipulators and we can scale it we can even rotate it if we so wish and it will it'll keep going um, all that's done is it's it's created a free image plane this time and it is still attached to the camera so if you move the camera around the image plane stays where it is um, but it is just in a separate group parented to that camera or rather parent constrained to that camera um, so that's just another option you've got for setting up uh, and that's really I think everything that the tool does um, yeah so you know hopefully that saves a lot of headaches hopefully it saves a lot of time uh, so yeah enjoy the tool thank you Andy for that wonderful explanation how amazing is this tool it is free it is light and we use it all the time in the studio because it's such an easy way to automate a process that should be very straightforward. So thank you so much to Steamroller and to Andy for developing it and sharing it with us for free. It's awesome. I hope you guys profit from it. If you like this kind of content, please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up so I know. If you don't like this kind of content, you can give it a thumbs down. I don't think a lot of people say that, but you can. <laughs> Feel free. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Check that notification bell so you never miss video. And thank you so much for being here. I wish you great holidays and I send you guys a big, big hug from the bottom of my heart. In place where you put it. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Don't forget to subscribe.